First, MickWest debunked the gimbal video. Then I debunked MickWest debunking of the gimbal video. And now he has responded to my DDD bunk. Wait, to my DD bunk. He responded and brought up some, some good points and actually gave some good models. So I'll show using his models that it, it did help. It did affect my results, uh, but I think it's even more accurate now. So this is it, the fourth debunk, hopefully the final. Let's get into it. So the gimbal video was uh, released. The Pentagon was forced to essentially say that, yes, it is uh, legit, it is valid. And Mick West made a video uh, three years ago, essentially, arguing that the object was actually much further away. And what we're seeing is some sort of glare artifact onto the lenses. I've used these pods for 18 years as an F-16 pilot, slightly different. I'm gonna show in this video how MickWest is right in certain areas, but the angles matter and the assumptions really matter. And I'm gonna explain in this video, and you guys don't like my models, or some of you don't, I like the models. So I got a new model, I downloaded DCS. It's a awesome online flight simulator, which seems very accurate actually. So I never played it before, uh, two days ago. I downloaded it. I had to spend 80 bucks uh, buying the F-18 simulator, which kind of hurt. There's some critical numbers and angles that are very important. So as you'll notice, if we walk through Mick West's uh, dispute, right? So he's basically disputing the angle of the turn. And this is extremely important. That was the whole angle of the turn that he was using is, is not correct. And I'll show that. Um, but I also was not exactly correct either so what i did is i got the simulator and i'm going to fly this thing standard right turn in a simulator 25,000 feet not on the autopilot because i don't know why autopilot will not work all right guys this is digital combat simulator this is an unbelievable program i just found two days ago uh, when you guys didn't like my models and you don't like how we draw as fighter pilots uh, i can show you at the end it's pretty accurate but so in this case i got a three-dimensional model it's called digital combat simulator it's awesome and so mick it's free you can download it but you have to pay 80 bucks for the high def versions of the aircraft so mission editor uh, i just picked the caucuses it was what it, what was in there and now you can just drop down whatever you want and in this case i dropped in a f-18 and since i paid for the additional i have a high fidelity track okay but let's say i want to see what a airliner looks like at 50 miles okay i can just plop this in, right? I can change this to, uh, you know, KC-135, uh, and I can set it at 25,000 feet. So we can put that down, and now you can have them like go back and forth if you want, like this, okay? And that's it. All right, as well, so this is just a uh, helicopter. I was trying to get a balloon. It's, it's super hard to lock on, like I was saying. Uh, so I couldn't get it to work out perfectly yet. Hopefully I will get you guys a better video of how that actually works. All right, but so here we go. So I can set the initial conditions for the fighter and I can just set it at what, it, what they were flying, right? Which is, and just remember, if you are doing this, you have to change this to player or client or you can't do it, okay? You can't fly the plane. Far as the weather, because this is important, right? So I set this at a, so I removed the clouds. I was messing with the clouds later, but we don't need it for this. And this is a standard day, so 2992. That's the, it's the pressure of the air will really affect all of this stuff, okay? So as long as everyone is flying with the same setting in their altimeter, uh, then everything works out fine, okay? As soon as someone has the wrong altimeter setting, even if it's incorrect for what the temperature of the day is, everyone will miss each other. You just gotta fly here, Okay, so F-18, okay, cool. Okay, so this is the F-18, right? This is the F-18, this is what they're flying with, okay? And underneath, you will see, let me turn this down for you guys. Okay, this is the targeting pod. See that thing right there? See that thing turning right there? Okay, that is the targeting pod, and what, what Mick was saying is that it, when it gimbals if there's something right up the nose. I've never had an issue off the nose gimbling, okay? It's just turning. And this glass you see on here, right? You see that, that glass? Uh, that's sapphire glass, you know? So the stuff that's on your, you know, harder than diamonds, like transparent aluminum, okay? So as that thing, as we move the jet here, you'll see that thing spin, right? See it? I mean, that thing, it tracks, okay? So there is a gimbal problem, but 
The only time I've had a gimbal problem is air to ground when you go right over the target. You go right over the target, looking over, it'll spin, and it's kind of hard to keep it right on, you know, right when the, you know, you have, you're having impact. Uh, okay, but this, this program is, is amazing. Okay, so this is what I, is on the jet that I'm flying. Okay, you can see it's, uh, we have those wing tanks uh, are, these are the fuel tanks. There's two uh, uh, AMRAMs on each station. That's awesome. They can carry double AMRAMs like the, the Hornet, uh, the Eagles. Uh, just aim nines on the side. So this should be about what they're flying. Um, you know, I don't know exactly. You can also put the pod on this center line, you know, that center, that center pylon that's there. Um, but yeah, anyway, I mean, you can see the, the pod is gonna, I mean, this thing is no joke. Like it, you know, there's that gimbal we're talking about. So that's what he's talking about. With, but again, I mean, we know this stuff uh, exists, okay? All right. So that is the F-18 um, that we're flying. So you, you see there, if I push, this is the flight path marker right in the middle of the screen, okay? Uh, and so this, where have I put that? See how it's lined up? This is the horizon bars, okay? This is the left MFT, okay? So we set it up on targeting pod. You can select air to ground mode, right? So now it's targeting the, the, uh, the ground. Get back to flare. Uh, or you can go to air to air, right? And it does look different. See how it goes to air to air mode? And it calls up the missile. That's that sound you hear. This is the radar, okay? So what I can do is, uh, yeah, I move over and then I lock this. So now you'll see in the HUD now up here, uh, I get a square saying that my radar is locked to it and the circle should be link 16. So basically data link uh, saying that it's, it's right off the nose, okay? So if we go into narrow field of view here, it will show up in time, okay? All right, so let's talk, it's 50 miles. Okay, so the simulator, <laughs> Simulator, I've been working with simulators for five years. Um, I was in charge of the contract at Phoenix. Simulators just show you what they want to show you. They don't actually work like the physics behind it. Okay, so you do have to take that for account. So whenever it's programmed into the simulator, you know, that you can see this thing, then it will just miraculously pop up, okay? So if I'm in a left-hand turn, I turn this way. Okay, the problem is if you are looking down, right, which we often are, <laughs> at your targeting pod, okay, it is very easy, I mean, it's almost impossible not to mess this up. So if you see here, this is a turn rate. So this is slightly different. The tapes are slightly different for the aircraft. Uh, I like this better, actually. It's much more accurate. I can put it right at uh, 30 degrees, okay, if I'm staring at this. But now when I look back at the, at the HUD, I bet I'm off in altitude. You see that? I was way down, okay? so. It doesn't provide all the information, um, you know, and what they had, this is basically, they have all this information for the actual engagement. You know, this is at least three things are recorded. I'm not 100% sure what's recorded uh, in the uh, Hornet, but I, in the Viper, we can record up to three displays, okay? And you can record your helmet as well. So this is the helmet, right? If you look away, um, it'll give you your altitude which will help you and it gives you your Mach number and G okay and this is the G number and this is what's so critical which was missed and I, I understand I mean Mick you're obviously a smart guy um, and I thank you for building the models but those are those are the you're missing that major assumption which is one of the hardest parts of aviation actually so day one of any flight school is going to be going over those complicated processes <laughs> the calibrated airspeed indicated airspeed true airspeed ground speed and Mach number these are all very complicated actual subjects okay because how fast is the plane actually going uh if you're in the air and the air is going 100 knots this way and you're flying 100 knots into the wind now you're actually not going anywhere you're really going 100 knots but not over the ground so it, it's it's complicated process but the most important thing is airplanes need to be safe Ultimately, you have hundreds of people flying in these things over everybody's heads. They all have to exactly 100% have this same flight path through the sky, okay? So this is an approach plate. So instrument flying, uh, what I just mentioned, is critical that the turn rates and, and radiuses are the same. And, and why, okay? Look, look at this uh, approach plate. Okay, where is this? This is Chicago. Okay, very busy. 
look at all these runways. Okay, you have two runways right next to each other. You have two runways right next to each other. So imagine there's two planes coming in to intersect because I'm sure there's approach, approach uh, procedures for both those runways. They're coming in at the same time. Okay, I, I mean, imagine that. How far could these possibly be apart? A few thousand feet? Um, at the end, we do have the uh, instrument landing system, much more accurate. But you have to get to that point, okay? So all of these turns, everything. You see this? This is a standard rate turn built on the altitude. It's called TERPS. These guys come out, and in order to actually approve one of these approach rates for flying, it takes like a year. So they have to come out and physically actually map all these things, determine the, the obstacles, determine the obstacle clearance requirements, and then determine all the missed approach turns, okay? So like if you don't do your missed approach right at the missed approach point, then you will not have clearance. If you don't turn at the proper angle of bank that's built for these procedures and built for all the aircraft flying around, you're gonna crash and hit into something, okay? And our civilians, the civilian aircraft are amazingly safe. I mean, it's unbelievable um, how, how safe these guys are. The concepts are difficult, but that's why we have cheaters. That's why we cheat. That's why we use Mach number up at altitude and to determine our turn radius down low when we're flying around with the ATC at 250 knots, we use uh, indicated airspeed and use just 10%, so you use 2.5 nautical miles. If your airspeed's 240 knots, it doesn't work up at higher altitudes because there's less air uh, as you go up. All right, so in order to explain this, we need, need to talk about how planes fly, okay? So basically, this is my one model that has made it through all the moves. My wife hasn't broken this. Uh, Okay, so basically, it's balancing right now in the center of gravity, right? So the only way we know how to push stuff up until, at least hopefully recently, thrust is pushing out of here. Okay, Newton's uh, reaction, equal opposite reaction. If we push a force this way, it will put an equal and opposite reaction this way. So that excels the, or propels the aircraft forward, okay? So that provides, so we have airflow over the control surfaces, right? Okay, so control surfaces is Bernoulli's principle. So normal wings, asymmetric wings, they're shaped longer on the top, kind of like this plane is shaped, okay? So when the, when the plane goes through the air, okay, the, the air molecules on top have to go a further distance than the air molecules on bottom. Okay, so they actually have to go faster. So this like faster speed, okay, but ends up at the same point at the end creates a pressure difference. So we have a greater pressure here, so thicker air, and we have less pressure here. So this will provide, create a force, okay? Which is mass time acceleration. So it'll, it'll create a vector, okay? When we talk about vectors, vectors have direction and magnitude, okay? So that's how we draw forces. So as we have our airplane, gravity is acting on it, okay? So straight and level, unaccelerated fight. You have one gravity pushing down here, okay? So why doesn't it fall out of the air? Why doesn't it just sink? Uh, because of that, extra force, okay? So the plane has to go fast enough, it has to have the correct angle of attack, okay? Because our military planes have symmetrical wings since they go supersonic. So fighter jets actually have to create the angle of attack themselves. Straight level fight, one G down, one G up, right? But now if we turn, what happens? So in order to turn, this is our lift vector, remember? The lift vector, the force from the wings will go perpendicular, the lift vector is perpendicular, to the wings, okay? So now this will create another vector. So a vector that goes here, okay? And then a vector that goes down. This vector hasn't changed. It's still one, one G, essentially, times the weight. But this vector now, if it does not increase in G, okay? If it does not increase in G, the plane will slice, okay? Because we have a vector now, you can break out your vectors. We have a vector going this way now, so that'll cause the plane to actually turn, but we also have to keep the plane from not falling. So that's why you have to pull back, and this will have to actually increase past 1G for sure, and I'll show in this, it's closer to 1.3 Gs. Uh, and hopefully I've instilled that the turn radius and rate is absolutely critical to safety of flying. And, it, and it's, what I just explained is basically the first whole day of any pilot school. If you go to any pilot school, they're gonna explain, you know, the lift, uh, the lift equation, uh, Bernoulli's principle, all that stuff. Um, so this is not, um, you know, this isn't something new. Any instrument rated pilot uh, will know these things. So now let's see, I was able to 
to actually redo the exact standard rate turn uh, with the altitudes. So let's check that out now. You can save here. You see, you can save, uh, save debriefing. So you can fly it and then uh, watch it later. Okay, so here we are at point one, set up with the jet that I just showed uh, previously, 25,000 feet, it's going 0.61 Mach, so pretty close. And you notice it's relatively level because it has to be above uh, 1 G. So this is a uh, 0.1, and I, I couldn't get the autopilot to work for some reason, just frustrating things happen, just like in the jet. So I flew it manually. I tried to match uh, the video. I watched the video and, and tried to match it at the same time. Um, so yeah, if anybody else can fly it better than me and more accurate, welcome to try. Uh, maybe, maybe get it uh, better results. So let's see. Point one. Dude, this is a fucking drone. We play for 10 seconds. There's a whole fleet of them. Look on the ASA. Oh my gosh. Okay, oh, here's point two, and you notice it's at 1.2 G, okay? And if we look here, slightly past 30 degrees, okay? So now let's try it again. Against the wind, the wind's 120 knots to the west. Oh, I think, dude. Okay, so here is point three now. We can check the heading again at 194. So this is less than a standard rate turn. And then we do the final 10 seconds. That's not an LNS though, is it? It's not. It is an LNS, dude. Well, if there's like another thing. Okay, and then this would be at point four. So you look, yeah, slightly above 30 and now 1.3 G. But I still think very close, okay? That is uh, within instrument, instrument parameters. So now let's see if we take that total amount turn. So 236 starting heading, 168 final heading. Uh, we get 68 degrees of heading in 30 seconds. So that is 2.27 degrees per second. So let's see how that matches up uh, with the other information. So if we've got a bank angle of 30 degrees, what we do is we take the true airspeed over here, which was 350, so just under this 360 line. We go across until we intersect 30 degrees, and then we go down. And that brings us somewhere around, I guess, 1.75. He denotes maybe he's doing something wrong, and, and, and he is, okay, so let's show that. So yeah, these graphs, difficult to read. So, so there's an assumption that's missing in here, and that is the weight of the aircraft, okay? so a heavy aircraft is going to turn very different than a light aircraft. So as, as we burn fuel, okay, we're much better at dogfighting at a lower, uh, lower fuel weight. So heavier jets are going to require more G to maintain the same altitude. They require faster airflow over the wings because they're heavier. So they have to actually create more lift to counteract the larger downward force uh, due to gravity, correct? So that's what's missing, and that's what these gravity lines are, okay? So I calculated the true airspeed. I calculated at uh, 396, so let me, I did that here. So 25,000 feet, 2992 is your standard altimeter setting, and then calibrated airspeed, indicated airspeed. You notice it's very close, okay? Because those, about the same, 240 knots, you hit calculate, and you get to true airspeed, 397. So now we can use uh, the graph here. And this is before we had fancy computers. Okay, it's in the checklist. So what you'll see is 396 is basically right here. Okay, so if we follow this over to a 30 degree bank turn. 30 degrees. All right, but that's at 1.15 G. But as I just showed, if, when we flew in the aircraft, the G required is going to be higher than 1.15. So you're gonna be on this side of the line. 1.2 is like here right here and now if it's over 1.2 which i think it is closer to uh, 1.3 now you look as we get a number right here and if you bring that down you get to about two and a quarter which is exactly what we calculated is a uh, 2.27 okay so if we turn what's what we measured so 68 degrees is what the jet turn uh in that in that turn that i tried to model divided by 30 seconds Okay, and that will get you your degrees per second, which is 2.27 degrees uh, per second. So now, if we type into the very handy program, Mick built, so thanks for building that, actually helps. Okay, so the rate of turn, you see, it does dramatically, okay? And what that means is, as, like I showed, if your rate of turn's like this, 
Now your, the radius is over three miles and you're gonna crash into the other plane. I mean, this, unless everyone is flying this radius of turn, uh, you're, gonna have, you're gonna have accidents, major accidents. Uh, okay, so if we go this way now, it's a smaller radius. So as, as we pull more G, okay, pull more G, fighters, dog fighting is all about turn circles, rates, and radius. Okay, that's why we know all this stuff. It's not because I love talking about it. Uh, so let, let's change this to 2.27 as calculated, and now it comes up with this, okay, which I'll show you is pretty close to what I drew. So we have 0.1 now, it goes out, intersection, like we mentioned, and then if we draw again, if we draw the angle I get that makes these two distances equivalent, because I, we don't see we don't see the thing changing acceleration. Okay, I see it's a very uh, vanilla static setup. So this is equivalent speed to the fighters. Okay, so this is the distance that they would be from the fighters if if they're going the same speed. Uh, measure this distance. Okay, and I did using paper for some reason. From here to here, and we get 7.4 nautical miles. Okay, what did I say in my original was 6.2. So it did affect by one nautical mile, same time, at 10 seconds. Now this is going uh, double that, which is Mach 1.2, okay, which is not very far. So if we look at the range there, if we measure that range now, you're looking at, we're looking at just under 10 nautical miles. So basically, the more accurate model and then flying it in the sim, I think now we're able to deduce that this thing is well within uh, seven nautical miles to inside of nine nautical miles. So I would say this thing is about seven to eight nautical miles. It's going the same speed as the fighters, which is what it looks like as we close, right? We, you don't see it ex getting larger or smaller uh, as they stern convert on this thing. Final thing I would like to explain, I can just talk through quickly, is how do we do it as fighter pilots? We get these markers and a pen. I don't normally have it, okay? But let's say we have 0.1 here. So we start out here. This is a, we'll use this as a one nautical mile pen. One nautical mile pen, okay? So at point uh, that, you can use those charts to figure out uh, turn rate and, uh, and radius. But like I said, it's around 2.4 nautical miles. So out here, okay, so this is the radius and it goes about a mile, right? So I can tell perpendicular to here, and now I can draw a line like this. And this angle from the original heading is gonna be 18 degrees off, okay? And now we drew that first line of bearing. So now we can draw a line of bearing, okay, with a straighter line. Okay, okay, now we do it again, okay? One nautical mile. It turns again, what was our heading that we had? Okay, so it's turned, how far is it turned? Now it's turned 23 degrees, okay? We know we're at that point. And now I will draw the line of bearing. So here's 90, 45, a little bit less. And now we would get a line of bearing out this way, okay? And this is point two, sorry, point three, point two, point one. So original. So now you can see exactly uh, where, where it would be and we can plot this out. Okay, so that's how we did it old school. Now we have uh, fancy uh, computers to help you, but I will say, I mean, it looks pretty accurate. To the digital uh, and and really the reason is because we have to do it so we we know all the tricks okay you don't do all the math to do in calculus you don't do all the math to determine the derivative of something or the integral you know you use the, the quick way right uh, because it skips all of these other assumptions you don't need assumptions for your mock number uh, because they're already built into how it's uh, calculated i appreciate the model actually i, I I'm glad uh, Mick West's out there. I'm glad you created this, Mick. Um, but I hope that this is, uh, we can, we, you know, we can at least move on about this uh, gimbal video. I appreciate everybody's support, guys. You know, I enjoy doing this stuff. I try and make it more fun. That's why I'm making jokes. You know, if you look in all the, all the movies, <laughs> all the stories, aliens are never laughing, right? So maybe that's our superpower. I'm happy to work with anyone that is willing to actually look, uh, do the work, 
uh, and, and then use actual science and appreciate these models here. I think it helped get us closer. I will do more videos with that DCS simulator. I'm messing around with that shortly and you can expect a pyramid video coming out very quickly. Thanks for watching guys. Please uh, like and subscribe. I read all your comments. Have a great day guys. Peace. Dad? What? D D debunking. D D debunk. D D debunk. Mick was debunked. Mick was debunked. I debunked him. Mick was debunked me. This is the fourth debunk.